Good morning, faith community. Good morning. Welcome to Sunday Morning Live. Welcome to our online faith community online broadcast. This is our third installment. And uh, listen, there's a lot going on, but we're making the adjustments as needed. We are the church. And uh, this time out, if you will, will be over at some point. But until it's over, we're going to make the adjustments needed and we're going to be the church. We're going to be strong in the Lord and the power of his might. And we're going to do this as long as it's necessary and we'll make the adjustment. So welcome to church this morning. We have a word from the Lord today, an anointed word. And we're going to have a great service in Jesus name. Amen. Listen, I, I didn't do something last week that I want to make sure I get done today. We uh, have quite a few who are watching us from around the country and um, they're our online guests. And we really do welcome you. Uh, I consider you part of our family. Uh, if you're from wherever you're from, if you're watching today and uh, you're welcome, you're our online guest. When we pray throughout the week, we include you in our prayers. We include those who are watching with us online and you have our blessing. If you need anything, the contact information is on the screen and we will also have contact information at the end of the broadcast. Feel free to call us if you need prayer, if there's any way we can help. We are a family. We are the body of Christ and you are welcome here today. In Jesus name. Listen, we will take communion today at the end of the message today. So you might want to go ahead at some point during the message or even now and go get your communion elements together. Just some cracker and, and some juice or whatever you have will work. It will suffice today in Jesus name. Amen. Today is uh, Palm Sunday. Today is Palm Sunday. We're going to talk about briefly what that means. What is Palm Sunday? Palm Sunday. And we want to focus on today the blessings of Passover. Uh, right now, there are more, unfortunately, there have been more than 8,000 deaths in the United States of America alone just in the last couple of weeks. That's a lot. Uh, so we believe today is timely, it's prophetic. We have a word from God today. I believe it's going to be a blessing to you. So as, as, our, as our custom, we don't like to waste a lot of time. If you all don't mind, we're going to get right into the word of God, and I'll see you at the end of the broadcast. Amen. Amen. Good morning, church. Uh, if you don't have a notepad, uh, go ahead and grab a notepad and uh, hopefully you have your Bible or your devices in front of you. And uh, today we're going to talk about Palm Sunday and the blessings of Passover. Amen. Amen. What is Palm Sunday? Today is April the 5th and uh, churches all over online are celebrating Palm Sunday. And uh, so we want to understand what is Palm Sunday. It's called Palm Sunday because the people laid palm leaves at the feet of Jesus as he rode into Jerusalem, as he prepared to be crucified. And the branch that is mentioned in Matthew 21 is actually palm trees. Uh, that's identified in Leviticus 23. If you want to look that up, uh, they that was Jewish tradition. They took the palm branch and the palm branch was a symbol of, of victory. It was a symbol of triumph and peace. So they took these palm branches and they laid them down uh, at the feet of Jesus and some were waving them and they were shouting. If you would, let's turn to Matthew 21. Matthew 21, please. Amen. In Matthew 21, we're going to read verses 1 through 11. And uh, if you would, let's read together. In verse 1, it says, as Jesus and the disciples approached Jerusalem, they came to the town of Bethpage on the Mount of Olives. Jesus sent two of them on ahead. Verse two, go into the village over there, he said. As soon as you enter it, 
you will see a donkey tied there with its coat beside it. Untie them and bring them to me. And verse three, if anyone asks you what you're doing, just say the Lord needs them and he will immediately let you take them. Verse four, this took place to fulfill prophecy that said, tell the people of Jerusalem, look, your king is coming to you. He is humble, riding on a donkey, riding on a donkey colt. The two disciples did just as Jesus commanded. Man, let's look at verse seven. They brought the donkey and the colt to him and threw their garments over the colt and he sat on it. Verse eight, most of the crowd spread their garments on the road ahead of him and others cut branches from trees and spread them on the road. Jesus was in the center of the procession and the people all around him were shouting, praise God for the son of David. Blessings on the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Praise God in the highest heaven. Now we're reading from the New Living Translation. In your Bible or your version, you may see Hosanna. Hosanna. They were shouting, Hosanna. Hosanna. Glory to God in the highest. The word Hosanna means save us. It means save us. They were shouting and praising Jesus as he rode in on this donkey in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Let's look at verses 10 and 11. The entire city of Jerusalem was in an uproar as he entered. Who is this, they asked. Verse 11, and the crowds replied, it's Jesus, the prophet from Nazareth in Galilee. Amen. So we see here that Palm Sunday symbolizes the day that Jesus rode into Jerusalem on this coat, on this donkey, and the people were waving palms at him waving palms at him. Those palms represent victory, triumph. Some laid them at his feet. Some were waving them. They were shouting, Hosanna, glory to God in the highest. That is the significance of Palm Sunday. Now today, we are waving spiritual palm branches. Amen. We're waving spiritual palm branches palm branches today before the Lord, as our Jesus right now is seated at the right hand of the Father in total and complete victory right now in Jesus' name. Glory to God in the highest. Hallelujah. Amen. This, this was what we are now calling Holy Week. Uh, for us here in secular society, this is the week leading up to Easter Sunday. In Jesus' day, uh, it wasn't such a great time. It was it was the moment he had prepared for. It was the moment for which he had been sent to the earth. But it was a week full of false accusation. Jesus would actually be put on trial. He would be judged and he would actually be executed on our behalf. Amen. I want to encourage you this week as we prepare for Passover Sunday, I want to encourage you to read chapters, Matthew chapter 27 and Matthew chapter 28 this week. Do that in honor of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Read what he went through leading up to his death, burial, and resurrection in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Now, what we just covered, that's the gist of Palm Sunday and what it means. That's what it means. Now, I want to explain something. Uh, uh, the Gregorian calendar, the, the one that we use today, uh, Easter is next Sunday on April 12th. But the Jewish calendar, Passover actually begins Wednesday, April the 8th. It begins at sundown, April 8th, and it ends on Thursday, April 16th, April 16th. Many times the Roman calendar, the calendar that we use, and the lunar calendar, they will uh, overlap or they will align uh, from year to year. So that's why today I want to discuss the blessings of Passover because actual Passover week begins this week and it will begin Wednesday. So I want to talk about the blessings of Passover. Amen. Amen. When Jesus died and rose again, he guaranteed every promise from both the Old and New Testaments as he sealed and paid for them with his blood. Uh, I want y'all to listen to me and, and I want to repeat that one more time. When Jesus went to the cross and he died and he rose again, he paid for every promise with his blood. Amen. If you would turn with me to 2 Corinthians chapter 1. 2 Corinthians chapter 1. Man, let's read 2 Corinthians chapter 1 and verse 20 together. It says, For all of God's promises have been fulfilled in Christ with a resounding yes. 
and through Christ, our amen, which means yes, ascends to the glory of God. What a powerful verse of scripture. It says that all of God's promises have been fulfilled in Christ. They have been paid for. Amen. And when we say yes to God's promises, it gives glory to God. It brings joy to God that we receive his promises by honoring what Jesus did for us on the cross. Glory to God. Amen. If you would turn to Romans chapter 15, Romans chapter 15. Amen. Let's read Romans 15 and verse 8 together, please. It says, remember that Christ came as a servant to the Jews to show that God is true to the promises he made to their ancestors. Amen. This is powerful. In Romans 15, Paul says, remember, Jesus came to prove that the promises God made to the ancestors, they're all good. They're good. So that means the promises from the Old Testament and the New Testament, they have been guaranteed by the blood of Jesus Christ, by the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. Today, we're talking about the blessings of Passover. Amen. Any promise you can find in scripture has been fulfilled. It has been guaranteed by the blood of Jesus. Amen. With that in mind, let's turn to Exodus chapter 23. We're almost done. Amen. The blessings of Passover. Let's look at Exodus 23. And we're going to read just a few verses here. And again, we're almost done for the day. If you would look at verse 14, it says, each year you must celebrate three festivals in my honor. In the King James, it says three feast days, three holy feast days. All right. In verse 15, it says the first one is unleavened bread. That is Passover. Amen. Amen. In Exodus chapter 23, verse 16, it says the festival of harvest. That's Pentecost. And then it also says the feast of ingathering. That's tabernacles. Amen. So there are three feasts that God said, I want you to keep these feasts forever. I want these to be everlasting ordinances. I want you to keep Passover, Pentecost, and tabernacles. Amen. Now, God told his people, his chosen people, that if they would keep these three feasts, if they would honor these three, that there would be blessings on the children of Israel that will blow your mind. Those blessings belong to us today. Remember, all promises from the old and the new have been fulfilled by Jesus Christ. So let's take a look at these blessings that come from honoring Passover. Amen. Amen. If you'll look closely with me in Exodus 23, let's go to verse 20. Here is blessing number one. Blessing number one. He says, I'm going to send an angel to protect you. Look at verse 20, please. It says, see, I'm sending an angel before you to protect you on your journey and lead you safely to the place I have prepared for you. I'm going to be honest with you. As I studied this uh, earlier this week, I've, I've, I've practiced this for many years, for many years. Um, but as I prepared for this week's message and I studied this all over again, I just began to get full and, and begin to weep and speak in tongues because these are awesome promises that God gives the believer that will honor his son by honoring Passover. Amen. God said, I'm sending an angel before you to protect you. Listen, know today that if you are a believer and if you will honor Passover, God has an angel assigned to your house. He's assigned to your name. That's a blessing. Amen. Glory to God. Let's look at number two. Amen. We've got a personal angel assigned to us. And the second promise God gave, he says, I will be an enemy to your enemy and an adversary to your adversary. Let's look at verse 22 together. He says, but if you are careful to obey this angel, following all of my instructions, then I will be an enemy to your enemies. I will oppose those who oppose you. In your version, it says, I will be an adversary to your adversaries. Verse 23, it says, for my angel will go before you and bring you into the land of the Amorites, the Hittites, the Perizzites, the Canaanites, the Hivites, the Jebusites, so you may live there and I will destroy them completely. 
Glory to God. God says, I'll fight your battles for you. Whoever's trying to come against you, whoever's trying to put a curse on you, whoever's trying to attack you, I will be an enemy to your enemies. Glory to God. Amen. Amen, FCC. I, I, I pray you're taking good notes. Uh, let's look at number three. Number three, he says, he will bless our bread and water. That's not talking about just saying grace. You'll see in a moment that he means he will provide, make sure that we have plenty. Verse number four, he says, I'll take sickness away from your house. Let's read the verses together. Verses 24 and 25. He says, you must not worship the gods of these nations, nor serve them in any way or imitate their evil practices. Instead, you must utterly destroy them and smash their sacred pillars. Verse 25, you must serve only the Lord your God. If you do, I will bless you with food and water, and I will protect you from all illness. Amen. Glory to God. God's promises in Exodus 23, he will make sure we have plenty of food, plenty of water, and he will keep illness from coming to our house. Glory to God. All of this from honoring Passover in Jesus' name. Glory to God. Amen, FCC. I tell you, it just gets better and better. Let's look at the next verse 26 and 27. He says, there will be no miscarriages, no infertility in your land, and I will give you long, full lives. Verse 27, I will send my terror ahead of you and create panic among the people whose land you invade. I will make all your enemies turn and run. Amen. Number five, God says there will be no miscarriages in your family. There will be no barrenness in your family and there will be no premature death. Hallelujah. Glory to God. He then said, I'm going to let you go into the enemy's camp. Take what belongs to the enemy. Your enemy is going to turn and run from you. Glory to God. These are the promises that belongs to the believer who's in faith. Glory to God. Remember, the word faith is the word pistis. It means you believe that Jesus is exactly who he says he is, that Jesus has completed the work. If you believe Jesus, if you believe he completed the work, these promises belong to us in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen, FCC. I pray this is blessing you like it blessed me as I prepared it for the church. I tell you, let's look at verses 29 and 30. It says, but I will not drive them out in a single year because the land would become desolate and the animals would multiply and threaten you. Verse 30, I will drive them out a little at a time until your population has increased enough to take possession of the land. Listen, God is so awesome until God says, you know what? I'm not going to give you a blessing that's too heavy for you or too much for you such that it will destroy you. But I'm going to give you your increase a little at a time so you can handle it, so you can grow into your wealth, so that you can grow into your blessing. That's the kind of God we serve. He's going to give us increase and inheritance. You know, when we planted our church, there were those who were saying, go, 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 you know, tell everybody about it. I said, no, it's not time yet. We're still laying foundation. And I said, when it's time, we will go forward. And sure enough, God began to send us the help we needed organically. We didn't recruit. We didn't call. God supernaturally began to send one after another after another. Now we have staff. We have people uh, all around to help us. We have so many that have come and joined our team. And now today, today at 415, we will have our first broadcast on the historic 1340 WLOK radio station. And people from all over the world will be able to hear Faith Community Church because now we're strong enough to possess the land. Glory to God. Praise the Lord. Amen. Faith community, look, we're done for the day. Listen, number seven is a special year of blessing. These blessings that God pronounced over the children of Israel, they were for the entire year. They were to last for the duration of the year until the next set of feasts rolled around. So the seventh blessing is this was a yearly blessing. Amen. As we celebrate Passover this year, as we honor Passover, we are securing our blessing. These promises we just read, we are securing our future, our 2020. Amen. By obeying God, honoring his word in Jesus' name. Glory to God. While others may deal with fear and dread, we have a positive outlook. We have an outlook of faith, 
hope and love in the kingdom of God and the finished work of Jesus Christ. Glory to God. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. At the time of this broadcast, church, there are more than 8,000 people who've died. I mentioned that at the front of the broadcast. And we receive every promise that we just read. Amen. The blessings of Passover, we receive them right now in Jesus name. We are shielded. We are we are secure. We have an angel watching over us. We are protected from the death angel that's roaming through the land right now in Jesus name. Amen. Amen. FCC. Glory to God. Listen, these feast days, uh, they were called festivals. They're called feast days. It's just short for festivals. It's very important for us to understand these weren't sad times. You study the scriptures. These were parties. These were celebrations. Amen. They were dancing, shouting, praising God. Listen, we know there's a lot going on in this world right now, and we might even know people who have passed away. But I'm telling you, this coming week, as we head into Passover, I challenge you to cast off the spirit of heaviness. Cast off the spirit of heaviness and put on the garment of praise. I'm challenging the FCC and everybody listening to this broadcast to this week, put on some praise music in your home, find something joyful uh, to listen to and give God praise all week long. You know what happens as we give God praise? You stir up your angels. You stir up your angels. They begin to move. They begin to move. They begin to block. They begin to ward off the enemy. Give God praise this week. Turn off the news this week. Turn off the news and turn on the word of God all week long as we head to Easter Sunday, what we know is Passover in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen, FCC. Uh, Romans 8, 28 says, and we know that all things work together for good to those who love God and are called according to his purpose. Amen. This quarantine that they have us under, God says, I'll turn it for your good. Listen, gather your family around at some point this week. Set a time. Gather around the piano. If you don't play the piano or have a piano, get a tape out. Get a CD out. Get your phone out. Go to YouTube. Get some praise music. And sing unto the Lord this week. Turn it for good in Jesus' name. Verse 31 in Romans 8 says, if God is for us, who can be against us? Amen. We receive the blessings of Passover this week. In Jesus' name, Father, we thank you for your word. Amen. And amen, FCC. Praise the Lord. Glory to God. What a word. We received that word today, Exodus 23, the blessings of Passover. Amen. We want to seal that word today with communion. If you have your communion elements ready, let's take communion together this morning in Jesus' name. Amen. In 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 23, you don't have to turn there. I'll read it. It says, For I received from the Lord that which I also delivered to you, that the Lord Jesus, on the same night in which he was betrayed, he took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, take, eat, this is my body, which is broken for you. Amen. This bread represents the body of Jesus Christ. During Holy Week, they took him to the whipping post and they beat Jesus until he was unrecognizable. Those stripes on his back represented sickness and disease. When we take the bread, amen, we are releasing healing into our body. He took sickness and disease so that we could have divine health. Amen. So this bread is medicine. Amen. It's the best medicine you can take. Glory to God. As we take this bread, healing is released into our cells, into our cells, amen, into our body. So we receive. Father, we thank you for your broken body that you gave for us this very week. Amen. Glory to God. We declare that we are the healed of the Lord, even from coronavirus. In Jesus' name, let's receive. Amen. In verse 25, it says, in the same manner, he also took the cup after supper, saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. If you read in another rendering, the actual rendering is, I want you to do this often in remembrance of me. Jesus says, I want you to take this often. Amen. As we take this cup, it represents the new covenant. What is the new covenant? We have been redeemed from the penalty of sin. The penalty of sin was death. Amen. That's why God told the children of Israel, put blood over your door. 
and the death angel can't come to your house. Amen. As we take this cup today, amen, we're hidden from the enemy. The enemy can't find us. He's looking for us, but he can't find us because we're under the blood. Amen. Father, we thank you today. Amen. We apply the blood of Jesus to the doorpost of our homes. We thank you that we are redeemed from the hand of the enemy and we're redeemed from the penalty of sin. In Jesus' name, let's receive together. Glory to God. Amen. The blessings of Passover. We receive faith community. Thank you for coming to church today. Amen. Thank you for being here. Our guests, thank you for joining us today. In Jesus' name. Listen, FCC, if you wouldn't mind, there's two things. If you would, make sure you're speaking your confessions over your life throughout the week. Amen. Get your confessions out that we talked about at the beginning of the year and continue to speak the word. Speak the word over your lives every day. Don't speak the curse. Don't speak what the news is saying. Speak the word of God over your life every day in Jesus' name. Number two, at the beginning of the year, the Lord spoke to us and told us this was a year of receiving. Glory to God. Did God know what he was talking about? Glory to God. This will end. And I'm telling you, when this is over, those who are in position, there is a great transfer of wealth coming to the church like never before. God knew what he was doing when he told us to get in position to receive in Jesus' name. Amen. Listen, time is gone. Our time is up for the day. We're going to go. Listen, have a great week in the Lord. Thank you for joining us. We will uh, meet on uh, our prayer night on Wednesday night again. We'll send out information for that. And we'll also get everyone's package to you with your communion elements in them so we can prepare for Easter or Passover Sunday in Jesus name. I'm going to leave today, as we always do, with a little original music. This is my old band. We got together with the new school, with my daughters, the young group, and we kind of did a collaboration together. I'm going to let you hear a little bit of that as we leave today. Have a wonderful day. Have a great week in the Lord, and we'll see you again next week in Jesus' name. Amen. I will praise you more. I will praise you more. That old Wednesday melody set aside all more built. And the growth of wickedness. And welcome the word planted deep inside of you. The very word that is able to save you. According to James 121. Now go get it fresh. One day we will hear the words well done, thou good and faithful son of yo. This is urgent that you listen to the words of the song. Life is running short, you have options to adopt something. It's an urgent that you pay attention, hear the words written to listen. This can save you from a black hole that is moving very strong. Tell me what's wrong, these obstacles can be optional. Uh. Praise you, praise you. I will praise you more. My opportunity to lead others to glory I ask that you help me not to worry About the things I battle with that keeps me worried <laughs> The devil is loose lurking for fools Who don't have no clue or don't know the rules of endangerment Protect us, Father, from such engagement That may lead us to temptation without invitation Praise you, praise you